Disney World is huge, literally the same size as San Francisco. With four parks to visit, that's a lot of ground to cover. So what if I were to tell you, you could only visit one park? Well, we asked our readers, if you could only go to Disney World for one day, which park would you go to? And then our cast chimed in and, well, that's when things got a little heated. All right, guys, big question today. I'm prepared for things to get a little wild, a little um, controversial oh, no. in here. I'm welcoming it, okay? <laughs> today I'm the host. I'm welcoming it. So, big question. If you only could go to one park in Disney World, where would you go? That's a loaded question because Disney World is big. It's very big and it's very hard for us to choose. I'm taking I'm taking a, a different approach today. I'm gonna be selfless in my answer instead of selfish. Um, so my favorite Disney park is Epcot, but that's not what I'm gonna say here because I do not think if you're only gonna visit one Disney park as a regular degular person who doesn't work for a company where you go to Disney World every day, I don't think you should spend your one day in Epcot. So I'm gonna say Magic Kingdom, the original, the big, the bold, the castle, the royal Magic Kingdom. Um, and most of our readers agree. People people think of Magic Kingdom, it's the quintessential original Disney World theme park opened in the 1970s. Tons of iconic rides and attractions, nostalgia for kids and adults alike, and new people who come here, they dream of seeing the castle. So Magic Kingdom, Nancy H agrees with me and says Magic Kingdom because it's the most Disney of all the parks. And she's not wrong, it's so Disney. Disney movies start with Cinderella Castle and a firework going over it. Oh, wow, that's wow. a nice play that right? you added there. Yeah, come at me with You're that You're going one. for the juggler. It's not what I would choose, but I do have to agree a little. But I don't think it's for everyone. I don't know that I would send everyone to Magic Kingdom. You know what? I, I have to mirror that sentiment, Emma. I, I, in, in a lot of ways, I agree. You know what I mean? Like, when you think about Walt Disney World, the first thing you're going to think about is Magic Kingdom. You're going to think about the castle. Like, you know, you're going to see the castle and all the branding. You know, it's, 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 it's that thing. However, comma, I, 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 I don't think that you're necessarily right there, Quincy. And I, uh, well, listen, listen, you can't say that parades part. and fireworks aren't like a core part of the Disney experience. And while I know one of you is going to bring up Fantasmic later, you haven't yet. So I, I'm still just going to say <laughs> Magic Kingdom's got nighttime spectaculars on lock with the fireworks happily ever after coming back this spring. I mean, the parades are amazing. Just ask Fry Bucket and her and her need to see Flynn Rider every single day. If there's two parades, she tries to go twice. Uh, yeah. That's uh, why wouldn't you? <laughs> it's excessive. It's Flynn Rider. I just think there's a lot to do. There's just a lot to do in Magic Kingdom. I don't know that Flynn Rider is like my top ten. <laughs> but maybe that's a me problem. I think okay. that's my own moral failing. It's okay. It's yeah. the smolder, right? It is. Right. It's, it's the smolder. He does it well. The smolder will get you. <laughs> yeah. Quincy, I would like to challenge you on your park of choice because yes magic kingdom is the original it's the og however magic kingdom has gone through many many changes so is that still a valid True. argument with all the changes that have happened in that park i think yes and even if it wasn't they've also got still so much most attractions out of any of the disney parks there's 30-ish attractions in magic kingdom which is wild that's so many <laughs> um there's the some of the best themed lands in disney world galaxy's edge who you ever been to adventureland she's beautiful girl um <laughs> I'm a tough crowd uh <laughs> but this this park also i mean and I, I get the sentiment that you guys are saying about it not being for everyone because magic kingdom is more family geared, I think, than the other parks. All of Disney World is family geared. But like Magic Kingdom especially has more family geared rides. It has more rides that you can ride with a baby than the other parks. Like the whole family can enjoy a lot of Magic Kingdom, um, which is why I do think it's a great one to broadly recommend. But they also have things for thrill seekers like Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and Tron Light Cycle Run now. So there's just, you know, and Tron was cool. Emma, don't you think Tron was cool? Tron was cool. Tron has had some haters, but I'm not in that camp. Yeah, I'm not in the Tron hater camp either. I mean, but they also have Autopia, 
or wait, what is it Tomorrowland called there? Speedway. Tomorrowland so Speedway. Disneyland. <laughs> the bougiest <Sorry>. Disneylander. <laughs> <laughs> they also have Tomorrowland Speedway. Yeah. So I mean. I like, listen, I used to hate Tomorrowland Speedway, but now Emma and I keep riding it at night and now I have like all these fond memories of being on Tomorrowland Speedway with Emma. And now I'm very proud of Tomorrowland Speedway. As Alias says, it would hurt to not go to, I cannot agree with this sentiment more. It would hurt to not go to Epcot, but it would have to be Magic Kingdom. Can't go and not ride Haunted Mansion in Small World. And I think that like, for me, before I was coming to Disney World all the time, like that's true. My More of my must-dos were in Magic Kingdom than any other park. I might like Epcot better, but I have at least five rides that are a core part of my Disney trip that are in Magic Kingdom, if not more. So I, I totally get that sentiment. Um, the mix of attractions at Magic Kingdom is just what really sets it apart, where you get like cool edutainment and like more futuristic attractions, IP attractions in Epcot, and DHS has more like thrilling attractions via thrill seekers and Animal Kingdom, animals. Magic Kingdom's got a little bit of everything, um, except ant eaters. My only yeah. other argument though about magic is because everybody does want to go and that is kind of a must do for a lot of people is that it gets so crowded. And so sometimes if point. you've never been and you don't know what to do, it can be hard to enjoy because you don't really know how to like mitigate, mitigate those crowds or things like yeah. that. So that's, that's why really magic can be mine. That is a good point. Yeah, that's fair. Well, I'll just, I'll just sum up my argument, which I still stand by. You haven't swayed me um, with a, with a quote from reader Bill in who really sums it up nicely. Has anyone seen my hair piece? It blew right off on Thunder Mountain. <laughs> so I think that really cements me as having the win here, um, is that Bill and lost his hair piece on Thunder Mountain. Do you guys know that Big Thunder Mountain Railroad uh, is like scientifically shown to help with kidney stones? Yes. Yes, yeah. my best friend actually had kidney stones and could not get rid of them. And so we, were, we looked it up and we went to Disneyland and his kidney, like he got off the ride and ran to the bathroom and mm -hmm. passed his kidney stones immediately. Like he vlogged about it. This Mr. Cheesy Pop, I could not, we were just like in such shock. It was crazy. If you have kidney stones, <laughs> your family has to take you to Disney World. It's science. It's science. It's, it's just science. science. This is something that truly in my lifetime, I never thought I would say. As a child, if you had asked me, this would have been like, no, I don't want to go there. I don't even want to go there. It's not, oh, should we? I did not want to go here. But now as an adult, I have changed my tune and I think that everyone should go to Hollywood Studios. Ooh, wow. That one might be weird. But in case you haven't been to studios in a while, it did used to be MGM Studios. It opened back in 89 and it was supposed to be dedicated to the idea of Hollywood, not actual Hollywood. So celebrities, filmmaking, backlots, all that good jazz. It is not really that way anymore. And that was my favorite theming, but there was a lot missing from studios back in the day. So now it's more, or it's less about making movies and it's more about being a part of the action, you know, getting to step into your favorite movies. According to Drew B, it used to be hands down MK for them, but I don't know. Studios is giving its money's worth right now. Like Drew says he just feels like it's super eclectic. There's a little something for everyone. Like I get what you're saying because I also never in my life would have said Hollywood Studios was up there for me, but I love going to Hollywood Studios. The food has gotten it. an upgrade lately. Like Galaxy's Edge is there now, Toy Story Land. Mm -hmm. It's still got classic attractions like Tower and like Rock and Roller Coaster. I just think that it's still not for everyone, but you know what is for everyone? Phantasmic. <laughs> we, the three of us, <laughs> sobbed in the Phantasmic Theater like little <sighs> babies. <laughs> We like, did. I can't wait to see we it. Did. I still haven't it's seen so it. It's so good. You, RJ hasn't seen it here. It's so good. Yeah. Oh, you it's got so to good. The it. new scenes cry. with Elsa and mm -hmm. Moana. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Elsa's my queen, so I'm, I'm sure I'm going to have a oh, moment you when I see it. I, that's my They're problem. Truly well, beautiful. The thing about Fantastic is that it's got like all of the effects. Like, unlike every other Nighttime Spectacular, it has the things like fireworks and projections and lasers and water effects, but then it also has full live performance characters and stunts. Like, it's just the best show ever. 
And yeah. like, honestly, the number of points that Hollywood Studios gets for it, I get it. I get it. Okay, so I have to agree. Fantasmic is the GOAT to me when it comes to nighttime spectaculars on both coasts. And especially with, you know, what they've done now, you know, to bring in new stories and characters. Um, and I've only seen clips, you know, I, I refuse to watch the footage even on this channel because I want to experience it by myself. RJ's well, not, not by myself, the skip but button. Yeah, I'm just like, because <laughs> I also, no, 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 look away, no, no, no. look away. <laughs> nah, but I'm still a little salty because they took away my favorite Little Mermaid puppet show and I'm waiting for that to come back. Oh, you're you know, a Voyage like of the, the Little Mermaid fan. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I like my asbestos mist puppets show from the 90s. Bring it back. Bring it on back. <laughs> Lots of people really like studios though. Jenna W says that her favorite is probably Hollywood Studios right now because she loves the thrill rides. With rides like Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith, it's hard to ignore that those rides are more for the teens, more for the older kids, you know, that maybe aren't as into Magic Kingdom family rides, but still want to go to Disney with their family. They have some kid geared stuff as well. So there's a, a mix kind of similar to Magic Kingdom. It's definitely more geared towards uh, like older kids and teens and adults, but you've got Disney Junior there, which is a really cool show for kids where oh, they get to actually dance true. with Vampirina and like um, Roadster Mickey. Kids can meet Chewbacca, which is really cool. Um, the Beauty and the Beast stage show is great for the whole family. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is one of the coolest rides without a height requirement ever. And it's the only ride that Mickey Mouse has. That's true. Alien Swirling Saucers, gotta call it out for Fry Bucket as our, as our resident child-sized <laughs> individual. Um, Fry Bucket does love Alien Swirling Saucers, so. I do. I do. I will also say that in Hollywood Studios' favor, I can appreciate that it is a smaller park. Now that means not as many rides, so longer lines, but you're not walking all the way across the park like you would say in Epcot from like back of World Showcase to the front of the park or Animal Kingdom can sometimes be a long walk. So I can't appreciate that about Hollywood Studios that it feels a lot smaller, a lot easier to do things. Like you said, it's not a lot of rides, but the rides are, they are top tier rides. I mean, you've got Rise of the Resistance and that's like, a whole experience. We can't even classify that as a ride, no. you know? You've got show, animatronics, incredible, you know, a little drop. Like it, it's, it's, it's so complex. So, you know, even though I differ on what park I would spend my day at, you gotta give it up for Hollywood Studios. It's come a long way. It's come a long way. It has come a long way. And one thing that I think, again, we talked a little bit about how it reaches out to more people. Now with Galaxy Judge, this is for Star Wars junkies. Like this is a whole new area of Disney people that Disney probably had not reached before. You had mentioned like Rise of the Resistance. It's like a whole experience. It's not just a ride. They also have Smuggler's Run, Ronto Wraps. I mean, there's a lot of things about just Galaxy's Edge alone that I think people should go to studios for. Not even the rest of Hollywood Studios, which I really like right now. Like I have told friends, you should just go just for Galaxy's Edge, just to see it. So I think that's another thing that people can get really excited about, especially like with the unique characters that just roam. It's a little bit more like Disneyland in that way, which I actually love. So there's not like static or there's, there's not just um, meet and greets that you have to go get in line for. You can just see them roaming and it really feels like you're in it. And I think that's another thing that makes studios uber special and why people should go to studios. Chewbacca did scare the living daylights out of me and Emma. <laughs> Mostly that me. Is true. I don't think Emma jumped nearly as much as I did, but he did. He really spooked me. He went behind us. It was wasn't expecting it. So jarring. I just looked <laughs> up and there was like really hairy teeth, and they were just right here. We had as on soon video as Chewbacca it, walked away, I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's amazing! That was Chewbacca!" And Emma was like, "I have never looked at his teeth that close." And I was like, "Are you no, okay?" It was <laughs> His teeth are Have hairy. You, well, like just his mouth and then also the teeth are huge. If you ever get the chance to look at Chewbacca's teeth, I don't <laughs> suggest it. Like It's horrible. Mr. RJ, please tell us what park you would choose and please give us your Listen. whole entire presentation. I'm ready oh, to hear it. I'm ready. <clears throat> I gotta get my papers ready. Listen, <laughs> experimental prototype 
community of tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Epcot, the GOAT, the undisputed champ. Listen, Magic Kingdom, you're cute, sis. Hollywood Studios, yes, you've got some nice things going on. But what other park can you go to where you can be educated and also have a good time? I'm talking about Epcot, you guys. She's going through some changes right now. She's going we, through we some know. changes. <laughs> mm -hmm. She just, she's got a nose job situation happening mm -hmm. and it's not cute right now, but like bear with her. You, you know? know when you're growing um, your hair out and there's that middle phase, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's where Epcot is. Like, it's like, it's cute when you got the shortcut and then as it grows out, you're like, oh, we just got to make it through this. <laughs> and then you get too long and it's cute. Epcot's in that middle phase a little bit right now. I, I just really, you gave me a really good visual and I actually feel really sorry for Epcot now. And I've been bullying her for about a year. So <laughs> good for you, Listen, Quincy. Epcot, she's just, you know, she's going through some things, but Epcot has such a rich history in Walt Disney World. You know, it was, you know, the, of course we know Walt dreamed of Epcot, a, a place where people can live that pushes the boundaries of the future. And, you know, although, you know, this interpretation of Epcot is not his original dream. It still encompasses, you know, parts of that dream, exploration of the land and the sea and the world and technology, you know? Uh, Martha Kay even says, Epcot is it. It has great rides, amazing food, and I love wandering around the countries and World Showcase. Like, come on y'all, World Showcase? Come on, y'all. Y'all already know. I think like the food is a really great point because Disney World is not in the and world the fact that we're talking about like the different lands because Disney World is not just about rides um, as much as I'd like it to be because it would mean I win this argument just because Magic Kingdom has the best rides objectively um, and, mm -hmm. and the most. Uh, but if it's not just about rides, it's also about theming. It's also about food and general experience. And Epcot, when it comes to theming and World Showcase, it really feels like being a world traveler. On top of that, with the Epcot transformation that's going on right now, right now we might have a ton of construction walls and the harmonious barges and the lagoon that people don't love. But those barges are on their way out. The construction walls are on their way out. And when they're gone, Epcot is going to be a totally transformed place of celebration and discovery and nature and the world and that's just a really inspiring like park idea to me and the theme is amazing the food is amazing there's epcot festivals none of the other parks have festivals i love it so i love true. an epcot festival we get beautiful festivals like the festival of the arts i mean literally you have broadway singers coming to sing from incredible Disney musicals like The Lion King and Aida and, you know, Aladdin. Like, you know, you're not going to get that at any other park. You have yeah. the Festival of Holidays where you can learn about different holidays all over the world and sample different food. And, and, and I mean, Epcot just encompasses, you know, a world global vision. And I'm here for it. Listen, yeah. I'm here for it. With the new expansion that's coming to Epcot, we got Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. And I don't know about you guys, but that's my my favorite ride now in any Disney park. It's I haven't ridden Tron yet. Lori T said, Epcot, it's a weird choice, I know, but somehow our best memories tend to happen there. Um, and I totally agree. You know, Epcot is celebrating 40 years, you know, uh, 40 years of family, of memories, of figment, one little spark, you know, of Dame Judi Dench telling us about the Phoenicians and how we should thank them. Yeah. You know, Epcot is steeped in, in, in memories and family and, and fun. I mean, what do y'all think? Do you have any good memories of Epcot? Oh, definitely. Some of my strongest memories growing up are in Epcot, but my brother and I loved Epcot as children. And Same every time for I my brother and that, I. Nobody understands that. Wow, and frankly, as an adult, losers. I don't understand it. Yeah, but that's aside the point. <laughs> We've known that. That's true. Well, I, my brother, when he was a little kid, so Test Track obviously has been redone but it used to have a theme. It now has the theme of the SIM car and you're racing your, your SIM car to see how its stats are. It's Tron, it's, it's very totally Tron. Tron. <laughs> but before that, it had a crash test dummy theme where you were a crash test dummy testing out cars or like you were the phase after crash test, dummy, crash test dummies. 
But there was a, a part at the end where when you walked out, there was a real robot, car building robot that they had in Epcot showing, demonstrating how cars were built. It was this giant yellow armed robot that would build a car. My brother, when he was like two years old, stood in front of that car building robot, hands on his hips and stared at it for like 35 minutes. And my parents were like, what's going on? <laughs> and so every year after that, we have a picture of my brother standing, hands on his hips, watching the car building robot. And sometimes I'm there too, but most of the time it's just my brother, hands on his hips, watching the car building robot. So that's my favorite Epcot memory. <laughs> I love that. And I will totally agree. I have a really awesome memory. Um, my my grandmother, who has passed on, um, that was her favorite park. And it was the first park we always went to when we came down from California. And we would always go to Paris. And she would buy the perfume in in the France Pavilion. And every time I go over there, I'm reminded of her because you can smell it. Like even next to Ratatouille, and I shed a little tear and it's a little, it's a little nice memory moment for me because I feel like that's her saying, hey, babe. How you doing, RJ? Yeah, she's oh, with you. Yeah, I and so, you chills. know. I know it, it, every time it really does. Epcot is, it, is so sweet. I mean, um, you know, besides the family rides, besides, you know, having Frozen Ever After and, you know, all of the fun new attractions that are coming to Epcot, like Moana, you know, the journey of water that's opening later this year, Communicore Hall and Plaza. Epcot's on the brink of exploration with the world, the land and the sea. And, and that's why I love it so much. That's why it's so dear to me. You, I'm like, so like I, Epcot's my favorite park and RJ's impassioned, like description of why Epcot should win <laughs> is like, I'm like, well, why not even talk about Magic Kingdom? <laughs> what other parks are there? I'm so mad at Epcot right now with its construction and now I'm not because RJ just gave such a beautiful presentation about it. Yeah. She's on her way. She will be the beauty queen that she's destined to be really I soon. can't wait for those construction Same. walls to come down. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm just gonna be sitting in there. You guys are gonna be like, where's Quincy? You're gonna be coming in here to try to film a video. I'm like, where's Quincy? And I'll be at Epcot, just sitting there. Yes. Now, some of our readers did mention Animal Kingdom, but not many. The question here is, what's your choice? And have you ever taken a minute to get over to allears.net to write your own review of any of the parks or restaurants or rides or any number of things to help other people make a better choice for their vacation? Want more info for your next trip? Do a search on allears.net for anything Disney or Universal and get results that will blow you away. Be sure to like and subscribe. And most important, join the All Ears community by following us on social media at All Ears Net. Have some thoughts the cast missed? Let us know down in the comments. This is Chris for allears.net. See you next time.